It seems that building a brand new gaming PC right now doesn't make a lot of sense due to the price of everything. So in this video, I want to show you how to put together a low budget small form factor PC that's very obtainable for a lot of people out there. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a budget gaming PC that's great for 1080p across the board and with some of the older stuff you can do 1440 with it. And all of this can come in under $300. So first things first, we're going to need a base for this system, and I like to go small form factor, but you can go mid tower with it and probably get out cheaper and actually put down some more performance with the correct GPU. But for this build's base, I went with the Optiplex 7060 and an i7-8700. Six cores, 12 threads. I do think the i7-8700 is kind of as low as you want to go right now. You'll find a bunch of these systems packed with i5s. I would probably skip those. And before we go any further with this, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Okay, so we've established the base of the system we're going to be using, and you can definitely find these for pretty cheap. I would check your local Craigslist. What I've got here is that i7-8700, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. This is how it came to me from eBay. I paid under $90 ship for this. You may have to go the bidding route to get it cheaper, but there are some buy it nows for a pretty decent deal. And of course, we're not going to be gaming on the iGPU here with that 8700. What I've got here is a single slot low profile RTX 3050. Still not the most powerful card on the market, but with the prices of other cards right now and the fact that we're going small form factor, this is one of the best low profile cards at the price. And on Amazon, they're 209, which is a bit high for a regular RTX 3050. But again, it's a single slot low profile card. Recently, over on AliExpress, I did spot this version, basically the same thing from a different company. Now, I have not tested this one, but these were going for $155, and I'll leave links in the description. If you can get it for this price, it would be a really nice deal. Okay, getting right down to it, there are a few things that I like to do with these older Optiplexes, given that these machines usually run 24-7. Now, they are workhorses. I mean, you can leave it on all the time. We've got dual channel DDR4 here, 16 gigs with the system that I have, but the 7060 does have two extra slots, so you could easily upgrade this, and DDR4 is really cheap over on Amazon. One thing I would recommend doing is actually adding some new thermal paste to the cooler, and actually just cleaning the cooler itself off, because uh, again, these things do run for a very long time, and we never know when the last time they were serviced. All you'll need for this is a Phillips head screwdriver, Go ahead and get the four screws out of the heatsink itself, and then we can just take a look at it. This one here actually looks like it's pretty dried up. So what I'm going to do is use some isopropyl alcohol, clean everything up. Something else we could do here is actually clean the fins on the cooler itself. You can use alcohol for this. This heatsink is kind of a blower style, so you will have to pop the clips off. But even just cleaning the dust out of the heatsink itself can increase the cooling capabilities of this system. And when it comes to applying thermal paste, it's really up to you how you want to go about it. There's several different methods. I've cleaned up the heatsink, applied some new thermal paste. Another thing you could actually think about doing here is adding a fan up front. With this Optiplex 7060, there's enough room for a smaller fan. And there is one more header on the motherboard. This one didn't come with it. You might get lucky and get one that already had that fan installed, but it will allow more cool air to enter the system and keep everything nice and chilly. But the last thing we need to do here is install our low profile single slot RTX 3050. And this does have six gigs of GDDR6. I personally like the RX 6400, but with only 4 gigs of VRAM, there are some games that kind of struggle with it, even though I know they would perform pretty decently on the 6400. That's why I opted for the RTX 
30, 50. Okay, so we've got everything installed. It's time to boot this thing up. And I did want to show you a few other things that I do from the operating system to get a little more performance out of this thing. Okay, so I've been up and running for a while now. As you can see, we've got that i7-8700, 6 cores, 12 threads. I do recommend using this i7 over the i5 variant for this 7060 OptiPlex. And of course, we've got that low-profile RTX 3050. A couple things I like to do here. From NVIDIA's control panel, I usually set this to maximum performance. Out of the box, once you install the drivers, it's going to be set to normal, but we want as much as possible out of this system. So I've set this to prefer maximum performance, and you can do some overclocking also on this from something like Afterburner if you wanted to. I'd say 150 megahertz on the core on this wouldn't hurt it at all, and it'd probably stay around the same temp. Next thing I wanted to tackle here was CPU performance, and with these Optiplexes, this 8700 runs at 65 watts. And it does keep it nice and cool, nice and quiet, but if you want to get a little more out of it, higher clocks, because this little 8700 can run it up to 100 watts. Now, I wouldn't recommend going up to 100 with this, but I use an application known as x86 Tuning Utility. And from our custom menu, we can go right in and set this up to around 80 watts. And the cooling system in this will handle it. It's probably gonna get a bit louder. That fan will spin up a little more, but we're gonna get higher clocks on all six cores going from 65 up to 80. And it is kind of a nice little free performance boost that we can get out of this system. Once we apply it, it'll let us know everything's gone through. And now I wanna show you how this thing performs. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at gameplay. But the first one we've got here is Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, so here it is at 1080 medium with DLSS set to balance. It's actually running pretty smooth here. We're seeing an average of around 68 FPS, far from an RTX 4060, but we're not working with one of those. We've got an RTX 3050, and it's actually really smooth. I figured we'd have to go down to uh, DLSS performance or even take some of the settings down to low. Not too bad, and with this paired up with a more powerful CPU, you could probably get a little more out of it. But if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, I mean, we're pulling 60 watts from the CPU. And this low profile single slot RTX 3050 can pull close to 70 watts by itself. Not bad, and we've got enough with the power supply. I'm not worried about that with this Optiplex. I mean, it's a lower powered card. But I do think we might be able to get a little more out of this. And there are people out there that just don't like frame gen. But we do have FSR frame gen built in. Unfortunately, Nvidia didn't backtrack with DLSS frame generation on the 3000 series, and I do think it would work out really well here, but they wanted to sell newer cards, so they never went back to this one. And there are people out there that just don't like frame gen. I understand, if you've got a high-end system, you probably don't need frame gen, and it's something you don't need to worry about, but with a low-end cheap system, it could help out. This is actually the first time I'm testing FSR frame gen with the RTX 3050 and I'm really not impressed. I've got a lot of screen tearing here. Uh, you can see our frame rate is way up, but it's really odd. Now I do have this connected to my game capture, which should support G-Sync, but it's not registering with uh, FSR frame gen on. FSR quality, frame gen, 1080. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to get so much frame tearing here. Now, the frame rate is way up, and I'll tell you, input lag isn't as bad as I thought it would be. It is kind of noticeable here using frame gen on this little card. So I would probably just stick at that 1080 medium with DLSS set to balance, kind of lock it down at 60, and just have a good time with the game. Next game we have is Spider-Man 2 1080 medium with DLSS set to balanced, and I'm pretty impressed with the performance. This is way above what I thought we'd be getting. I figured this would kind of fall on its face with the RTX 3050, but as you can see, in some cases, we're seeing well over 80 FPS, but by the end, we had an average of 78 FPS. Overwatch 2, I knew it was going to run pretty well here. We're at high settings, no DLSS, 1080, and uh, I forgot to turn VSync off, so we're kind of locking right there up at 120. Either way, I mean, it's fully playable, and I knew esports games were going to run really well in a system like this.
Wanted to go back a bit, one of my favorite games, Fallout 4, 1080, high settings, and it may be able to handle ultra. I just went to high knowing exactly what kind of specs we have here. I wasn't sure how much this game would hit up the CPU given the newer update, well, relatively newer update to the game from Bethesda. But yeah, I mean, we're not maxing out that CPU. I figured that would kind of be our bottleneck here. It's not bad. Marvel Rivals. This is one we did need to add a little bit of DLSS. We're sitting at balance there, medium 1080. And even then, in some cases, you'll see it drop under 60, but this little system is really trying its hardest to run this game over. Here's Forza Horizon 5, and with this we don't need any kind of resolution scale, so DLSS, FSR, all of that is turned off. We're at a true 1080 high settings with it, and we're getting over 110 FPS on average. Of course, we had to test out Doom Eternal 1080 high settings, ray tracing completely off, not using any kind of dynamic resolution scale. I've got the in-game stats up in the top right hand corner. This is performing really well and I kind of suspected it would. It's just a very well optimized game. And the final game I wanted to test here didn't fare very well. So this is Monster Hunter Wilds 1080 low, and I did use FSR frame gen. So with this, I'm not getting the screen tearing like I was with Cyberpunk. This actually feels much better, but we still have those dips under 60 FPS. And I really didn't expect this game to do very well going into it with an RTX 3050. I've been doing a lot of testing with it. The game definitely needs some more optimizations, and this is not the ideal system to be running it on. So overall, for what we have here, it's not a bad little system given the price paid. And if you wanted to go a bit bigger instead of small form factor, you could probably get out a bit cheaper. You can find a used RTX 3050 for cheaper, even go with something like an RTX 3060 and it would fit inside of one of these Optiplexes if it's the mini tower or the mid tower. But again, I love these small form factor setups and for 1080p, it's doing way better than I thought it would. Now, if you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description. And if you run across any other newer low profile single slot GPUs that'll outperform the RTX 3050 for around the same price here, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.